perempuan Minang itu perempuan yang kuat karena dia secara budaya dan adatnya punya posisi yang strategis. Dia pemimpin, pengawal moral secara apanya itu perempuan. Yang tadi saya sebutkan Mandi Soko tadi. Dia yang pemegang otoritas. Kemudian di, dianugerahi tiga orang putra. Keinginan sebagai orang Minang, perempuan Minang, pasti ingin anak perempuan. Dia yang punya semua itu kan perempuan. Aturan perempuan. The largest difference for women who go into business, who start their own company, is that they are entering a male-dominated world. So if you enter this as a woman, you are being faced with challenges of where you basically experience that what you say doesn't get heard as much or perceived as much as if a man would say it sometimes. So I think there is a lot of learning and experience in terms of how do you express yourself, how do you present yourself, how do you get your message across, how do you convey your confidence. Hi everyone, I'm Sophie. I am the founder and CEO of Kino Medical and I'm here in uh, Indonesia, Jakarta, to uh, meet other amazing female entrepreneurs and uh, explore the tech scene a little bit. Uh, traffic is crazy. I am already experiencing my first uh, traffic jam here in the city. Yeah, I'm excited to see what else is going to uh, wait for me in a bit. Inequality is unfair and it happens every day. And to think that Germany is that much more advanced, I think we would be very wrong. When you look at um, large uh, business CEOs, um, you know, the fraction is, is, is really small. So I think many countries are facing uh, the same challenges right now when it comes to equality, no matter where. I put on the headband yeah. first. Put on the headband. Is it okay? <laughs> okay. They put it up over the ears? Uh, you okay. can put it in the ears or, uh, yes, like that. And use it like this. And make sure the shape is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes, like this. So actually, yeah, in, in Islam, we have to cover all the this part and this part. But it's okay. How do I look? Nice, really yeah. nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and so you wear this every day? Yes. Uh, oh, but only outside or at home yes. as well? Only outside, 
with the hijab or the headscarf in connection with Islam, you know, I never really knew how to approach that or how to deal with that. Because also the discussion that is being led, especially in the Western world, about Islam and about women and oppression and that comes with the headscarf, I think sometimes it paints a very um, difficult picture to, to follow, especially as an independent strong woman I like to see myself as. I'm wearing hijab and when I'm work, I feel that I'm, I'm difficult to find the appropriate hijab to go to the office at that time. Mm -hmm. And there is no big brands in Indonesia yeah, in terms yeah. of hijab fashion. In the other hand, there's a lot of big brand, mm -hmm. international big brand, and they try to make this hijab fashion. Mm -hmm. Why not Indonesian people made their own brand and marketing to this uh, biggest population, <laughs> Muslim population in the world. That's uh, really? part of economic empowerment too. Yeah. Actually, Islamic or modest or Muslim fashion is not only about how we wear our clothes, but how we also like conscious about how we made it. And the value chain itself has to be halal. It's on me, the responsibility to make this company growing and sustainable. I think because I'm a woman, I'm not, I'm not feeling that I am the boss. I'm feeling that we are a team. And I cannot do anything without my team. <laughs> and I'm not positioning myself as a boss, but I'm positioning myself as team player with them. I think women tend to stay more true to themselves and women tend to be more authentic and want to believe in something in order to follow something and put effort and energy into it more so than men do. They want to feel connected to the cause that they are, they are doing. You know, wherever passion is, wherever your heart is, wherever, you know, you feel more than just a job or just a business. This is when you become excellent. This is when you don't give up. This is when you start fighting for something. And we just need more of that in the world, I think. So um, passion and emotion is a good thing. That's pretty much in the middle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are better than I am. No, 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 no. I'm learning from you. I'm still learning too. It's not perfect yet. Yeah. I really want to like learn how to do it better. And yes, every time I, I do this uh, archery yeah. session, I feel that it's getting more like focus, focus, and focus. So it's trained me how to keep focus, and it's very important for me as a entrepreneur because we do a lot of things we think like yeah. like a lot of agenda a lot of things every day so yeah we have to keep very focused
Jadi adat Minang ini mempunyai keistimewaan, keunikan. Mungkin ada beberapa di dunia ya. Minangkabau itu menganut sistem kekerabatan matrilinear. Itu kalau tempat lain ada tapi tidak Islam dan yang besar. Perempuan misalnya di, di Minang itu owner dari segala milik kerajaan, milik kaum atau milik kerajaan, milik istana, milik raja, milik tanah, milik rice, milik segala macam itu perempuan. Saya sebenarnya uh, memulai usaha ini dengan mandiri, tanpa dibantu oleh pihak manapun, baik oleh government, baik uh, dengan siapa saja. Saya pertama kali mulai dari awal, dari nol untuk bekerja, untuk menyediakan uh, kopi luak seperti ini. Kenapa saya tidak bisa, orang lain bisa, itulah moto saya. Jadi itu yang membuat saya bisa bertahan dalam bisnis kopi luak sampai hari ini. Jadi antara pada pada umumnya bisnis kopi luak itu kan dikerjakan oleh para, para lelaki. Nah itu sering juga saya bertentangan dengan uh, uh, keluarga saya. Keluarga saya ada perempuan, jadi. Uh, dia karena dia, oh kan tidak ada hak laki-laki. Bukan tidak ada hak laki-laki. Yang bertanggung jawab laki-laki. Tapi yang punya apa itu memang karena di Minang, ya perempuan. Ya kalau salah pernikahan itu yang masih panjang buat saya. Kan? Masih panjang. Jadi kalau di sini ya, kalau menikahnya itu ya harus uh, udah menikah, udah sah kan. Jadi kita harus uh, tinggal sama orang tua perempuan atau atau maupun kita sendiri atau maupun buat rumah sendiri gitu. Ya, kalau menurut saya ya memang itu udah ke kewajiban ya. Kalau ada warisan itu memang harus diturunkan kepada perempuan. Pemimpin itu sih harus laki-laki, harus laki-laki. Tapi perempuan itu diistimewakan, nah gitu. Kalau menurut agama itu memang begitu, memang sih harus begitu. Kalau pada laki-laki ini memang harus jadi pemimpin. Ya, sebab perempuannya harus dilindungi, nah itu maka diistimewakan. Memang begitu, memang begitu sih harusnya, bukan empat tangan saya saja ya. Hello, I'm in a coding school called Code Kiddo and I'm meeting some amazing upcoming coders and I want you to meet them as well. So we have who here? Hello, my name is Shafran and I think coding is fun. Yeah. And the next one. Hi, my name is Jennifer and I think coding is awesome. <laughs> and we have... Hey, I'm Leo, founder of Reblood. Code is super cool and changes people's lives. Awesome. So coding is an amazing skill to have, um, independent of age, as you can see. 
and uh, we should all encourage kids to start learning how to code or learn this ourselves. The kids are learning how to code by learning the basic structure of code. So not even typing something in, but really building coding blocks on each other. And they do this in a very gamified way. I learned that everyone can become entrepreneur. Yep. Everyone, everyone. If, if so, it's like programming. <laughs> if, <laughs> if we have the right mindset, yeah. of course. And second, if we are persistent enough. Yeah. And why do you think that um, young Indonesian people don't have the the risk taking mindset? It's like uh, I think from a lot of. Uh, factors. Mm -hmm. First is parents. Mm -hmm. So parents still think like if we work in a very big corporate, we have a stable job. Very prestigious. Uh, yeah, yeah, very prestigious. So our life will be very good yeah. enough. But a lot of parents mm -hmm. still have the mindset that uh, oh, we cannot have failure. Mm -hmm. But failure is exactly mm -hmm. what we need to learn. And to get better. Yeah, yeah. just like this one, like you have to configure the robot so many times, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and you need to fail so many times yeah. until we find the right yeah. configuration. And yeah. my parents specifically doesn't really want me to yeah. get any failure, just mm -hmm. like oh, success on the first try. But, but yeah. if we don't have the courage mm -hmm. to take risks or to have failure, then we cannot achieve great things. Yeah. Do you think that because you're uh, a woman, you, your parents might be more critical of you being an entrepreneur than if you were a boy? Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. So, so in my position, like I'm the only child, yeah. that's, that's become harder mm -hmm. also. So I built my first startup mm -hmm. until now since I was still in university. Mm -hmm. And back then, my parents think I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm crazy and stupid, but uh, I want to prove them that this thing uh, actually can be a successful startup that can save more lives. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there was like a lot of conflicts back then. Yeah. So my goal is actually to solve the blood donation shortage. In the future, we don't want to see any more patients or the families who were really, really panicked and feel the suffering uh, looking for blood donations. I mean, I want that every time, every second or every minute that uh, an emergency happened, the blood already available. Blood is a blood donors app that we started on 2015. So we find out that a lot of people want to donate blood, but they don't know when and where. If we found that a lot of people know when and where, 50% of them uh, get rejected by the Red Cross because they cannot pass the health checkup. So the number is keep smaller and smaller. That's why we never have enough blood bags every year. So that's why we build a platform that actually make the information about blood donation more accessible for the blood donors. You need to be the first person and the biggest fan of yourself and of your idea. And you need to be the one who should be able to defend the idea no matter what. And you should do that because that's the confidence level you need. 
in order to succeed. Because when you enter this world of entrepreneurship, you have this idea, nobody has done this before, and um, you will face a lot of people who will tell you that this is not gonna work out. Did you also have to um, look for investors at one point, or is that all bootstrapped? Uh, in the second year, yeah, yeah. we start to raising funds and mm -hmm. we start to meet a lot of investors at that yeah. time. Yes, yeah. and at that time too, I already have a baby. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and in some point, I feel that uh, maybe not not really much, but there is yes, there is some investor who mm -hmm. see me as a female founders and you already have a kid and it will be very challenging to you so it's not really good condition yeah. in terms of growing business. Yeah. Did they ask you directly? Yes, because at that time when I come to the meeting, I, I bring my baby oh, and cool. the nanny. <laughs> wow. Because I'm just just, just delivering my, yeah. my, my, my baby, so I, I bring my baby too. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great that you brought your baby mm -hmm. to the investor meetings. I can, you know, I would love to see their faces. I would just want to see how they react. It's not easy at all. Sometimes I feel that I want to stop everything. I just want to be with my baby. <laughs> there is a part of my life, especially when I'm, I'm just give birth, I, I just want to be with my baby. I have to go to the office just two days in a week. The rest I have to work from home. So that's the thing that I try to regulate myself, but I can still deliver the, the result because I still can work from home. Yes, it's challenging. Sometimes I don't want to go <laughs> anywhere, but yeah, I have to face it and I have to very uh, understand about what I'm doing and what is uh, the motivation. To me, a feminist is a person who believe that men and women are created equally and are equally gifted. I think every woman should be a feminist and every man should be a feminist. And the perception in the world is by far not there yet. So I think we need to elevate the perception of women to be equal to men and therefore we all should be feminists. I am proud of being a woman. I like being a woman. I'm not going to hide it. But at the same time, you need to understand what you have to say and how you have to say things in order to be heard. And those are little things like speak up and be loud. Be heard, basically, right? Like take a place at the table. Um, choose a central place. Don't go into the corner or the second row. Push back. When you are being interrupted, call the people out. And sometimes you can interrupt the other person. There is nothing you know, too wrong about this. Be very confident. Uh, don't accept arguments that don't make sense for you. It's not about not being yourself or being not authentic. Uh, it's about playing by the rules. Perempuan Minang itu, walaupun mereka punya, punya kemampuan kapasitas, 
bisa jadi pemimpin. Tapi itu jarang sekali kalau kita lihat yang mau jadi bupati, tidak ada jarang itu. Jadi pilihan pekerjaannya itu agak agak tidak bisa kita jelaskan itu.